Welcome to the Real Chili Podcast. And the Golden Eagles of Marquette University in Milwaukee are bound for the Final Four for only the third time ever. Five seconds left. Marquette down by one. Trying to avoid the upset. Blew the drive. The left hand. It's good. Every day, as basketball players, as students, and I want to win every day, most importantly, as people. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Real Chili Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Lavender. I'm joined by Pete Mohan and Peter. For the first time in two years since 2017, Marquette is back in the NCAA tournament with a five seed playing this Thursday. It's been a long season, and hell, it's been a busy and long past three weeks. But at the end of the day, it is good to be back in the NCAA tournament. It's good, and I think that if you asked any of us at the very beginning of the season if we would have a five seed coming into this year, everyone would be ecstatic. And I thought that I was on more of the rosy side of predictions, and I at the beginning of the year I think I said that we would be a six seed so I think Mm -hmm. even exceeding some of the better expectations on the year when we're looking at the big picture here this team had a great season and I think that uh, our seeding teams who have a lot of quadrant one wins will get better seeds and Marquette really accomplished that first of all in building their schedule for the season and second of all executing in the non-conference and getting big wins against good teams who ended up being you know some of the best teams in the country this year including right. wins against Buffalo and regular season Big 12 champion Kansas State so we did great work in the non-conference and that ben- benefited us with the top five seed so Marquette will be a five seed in the west region they will play on Thursday Uh, March 21st at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Central against the 12th seeded Murray State Racers from Murray, Kentucky. Uh, Murray State is a a small college, actually not too much smaller than Marquette, has about 10,000 students enrolled, uh, nestled there along the southern border of Kentucky right next to Tennessee. And Pete, we've been looking at Murray State, but really before we before we dive into Murray State, I think we wanted to talk more about this bracket. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the West region. So we're in Gonzaga's region. Gonzaga is the number one in the West region. Marquette will play in Hartford, Connecticut, which is just a couple hour drive from you. Uh, but really, as we're looking in Marquette's region, there are some really interesting teams. This is a this is a region with Michigan. This is a region with Florida State and obviously Gonzaga. And if Marquette were to advance against Murray State, we'd be staring down the barrel of a of a Florida State team who is damn good. So a really interesting region for Marquette to have been placed in. Really interesting region on the whole with a lot of interesting teams that have been – uh, varying extents of good this season. When when you listen to the pundits all year, there's guys who value different things. The West is kind of a collection of teams who have been good by all of those strange standards. So, like, for example, Gonzaga, just a good damn team. You know, they, they've been in the top five pretty much all year. They You know, they stumbled in the WCC conference championship game against St. Mary's who pulled it off there. This is a team that has been great all year. Then you got Michigan, who is probably one of the best defensive teams in the nation, if not the best, Uh, really got off to a hot start, was number one for a time, I believe. They stumbled a bit down the stretch in the Big Ten, but Michigan, damn good team, one of the best coaches in the country in in, uh, Mm B-line. Keep going down the line, Texas Tech, Another excellent defensive team who has shot it better of late and is really a scary team, a team that some people think is a Final Four caliber squad. Florida State, uh, well, a team. Well, let's not read the whole bracket. Well, yeah, no, I know, I know. But, I mean, like, these are team Florida State, almost as good as the, the cream of the crop in the ACC. They were right there with Duke through half of the game. So you're, you're talking about a lot of teams who 
have been mentioned throughout the year as final four caliber teams, but maybe just couldn't cut it. They were just a, a bit below the best in their conference. And it's going to be a tough go. Even if Marquette can get past Murray State, I think that Florida State is a really challenging matchup for us. Needless to say, Marquette has struggled of late. And I, I think one of the things that we wanted to talk about before getting to the Murray State matchup, which again, we're going to talk about on this pod, but we're going to have a deeper dive from some of the fellows later this week. But Marquette finished the season, uh, the final six games, and went one and five. And, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of different factors that went into this. Uh, one of the really interesting things uh, from my perspective is how Marcus Howard factors into this and how his play has really changed of late since an apparent injury at Villanova. So basically, it, it, here's how it goes. This season, prior to his apparent injury against Villanova, Marcus was shooting 44% from the field, 43% from three, and averaging 25 points a game. Since then, he's shooting 32.9% from the field, 26% from three, uh, and averaging just 22 points a game. So his shooting statistics have fallen significantly uh, since that game against Villanova. And by the way, those aren't the only two things that have dropped. So as I'm entering this game for Marquette, as, I, as I'm thinking about this matchup with Murray State, I actually think it's a good matchup for Marquette against Murray State. But I'm worried about how Marquette can tailor their offense when clearly this isn't the same Marcus Howard that we got used to in the, in the beginning and middle part of the season. I think that Marquette will benefit from having a little bit of time off. And although we did lose to uh, Seton Hall in the semifinals, don't scoff at that extra day that we had off in terms of getting Marcus ready for the next round. While it would have been great to be competing for the Big East Championship in MSG, the way that Marcus looked, especially against Seton Hall when he was grabbing his wrist and things like that, I think if really your sights are set on performance in the NCAA tournament, you want that extra day of healing for Marcus in what seems like kind of a nagging injury. But we will have the benefit of having these days off, you know, and in general with the Big East tournament prior to this coming Thursday, we will have only played in those two games over essentially 15 yeah. days or something yeah. like that. Yeah, a couple of weeks. So – We've had that chance for Marcus to get a little bit healthy. I think that we will see a Marcus that looks close to what we expect in this game. I don't expect him to be perfect, um, but clearly he was banged up in the Seton Hall game when he was shooting those free throws down the stretch and missing. I think Marcus is going to look 90% of what we expect from Marcus Howard in this game. That's just me. Maybe maybe I'm making that up. But uh, he's going head-to-head -head against another pro point guard Mm -hmm. prospect in Ja Morant and he's going to be up to the task he knows who he's facing just like he did against Miles Powell and he's going to try and save face in this matchup guaranteed I well I, I have no doubt he'll try and and one of the things that I look at is Marquette being one in five over the last six games the best game that Marcus Howard had in that stretch was against George uh, was against St. John's in that one win that we got he was eight for 15 from the field uh, clearly started the game off by trying to distribute the basketball. Now, clearly Seton Hall is a better team than St. John's, but I think there's kind of a mold which Marcus Howard and which the coaching staff need to adhere to. Even if Marcus is only 90%, he's not going to be, unless something miraculous happens, in my opinion, he's not going to be the miraculous Marcus Howard that we saw earlier this season, uh, you know, putting up 45 or, or 50 plus points. I, I just don't think that is in – uh, the realm of possibility anymore, unless there is some sort of major leap forward with his wrist. So Pete, you were talking a little bit about time off Murray state hasn't actually played a game since Saturday, March 9th. So coming into this game, uh, they will have been off and not played a competitive game for about two weeks. That was when their conference championship was where they beat Belmont to secure a bid uh, in the NCAA tournament. So if you're looking for edges, I think one thing is Murray State having a couple of weeks off, maybe not being, you know, right in the middle of game shape. I think that's one positive you could see for Marquette heading into this game. Make no mistake, Murray State is a balanced team. 
yeah, they are led by a great guard, but this is a team that can defend. Their adjusted defense is 81 in Ken Palm, but that's kind of deflated by the conference that they play in. They were the number two offense and the number two defense in their conference, which is exactly the same that Marquette was in the Big East. Mm -hmm. So we're similarly balanced, I think, and this is just going to be a good basketball game. I definitely think that Marquette has the overall matchup in terms of, you know, the talent of the roster. And size. And and size. And I think, too – we will benefit from the officiating a bit more than we did in the Big East tournament. That's it's really actually, going out on a limb. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, of course there was some obviously poor calls in the Big East tournament, but I think yeah. that in general, mm-hmm. the style of officiating between the Big East style and especially Big East tournament play uh, and – the national average officiating crew is actually beneficial towards Marquette in the way that they draw fouls at the rim. They play a solid defense in general without fouling on the drives, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that while it was not a good feel for us during the Big East tournament, I think that the officiating in the regular NCAA tournament, uh, if it's Average, I mean, of course, we could get bad officiating, but I think that will benefit from average officiating in terms of how they're taught to call it, restricting ball movement, rest- mm-hmm. you know, two hands on the on the offensive player, things like that. I think that we stand to benefit from that type of call. Ken Palm predicts that Marquette will come away with a 76-72 victory, giving Marquette a 63% chance of winning this game. I'll tell you what, Pete, I, I, we were talking a little bit before. I was able to watch one game between recording of this podcast uh, and, and announcement of this matchup, and I watched, Bel- uh, I watched uh, Murray State's most recent game against Belmont in the OVC, Ohio Valley uh, Conference Championship. One thing that's – a lot of things jumped out at me, but I, the thing that has stuck in my mind Murray State did at least in that game is not a team that shoots the ball well. Their offense comes inside the paint, and that's either Ja Morant driving downhill, getting to the bucket. Number thirty-two on their team, Darnell Cowart. Um, he's a big boy, two hundred ninety-five pounds, six-eight. He's a, he plays with his back to the basket. He's a little crafty, uh, maybe slightly in the mold of Devonte Gardner, but not nearly as lovable. So this is a team that, I, I kid you not, in watching an entire game, I could count on one hand the number of three-pointers and mid-range jump shots that they hit. Mm-hmm. Everything was within five feet. And so that tells me a couple of things. One, they're not good shooters. But two, to your point, fouls and how it's called is going to be so important because Theo John – Ed Morrow and everyone else down there is going to be put in position pretty frequently uh, to have to, you know, defend guards coming flying in. And that's going to put them in position uh, to potentially be called for a lot of fouls. Yeah. I think that we really hope that Theo can come through with a consistent game and not really getting into foul trouble because Murray state is not a good three point percentage shooting team. They're bad. Uh, they're bad. They shoot 34% as a team, and in conference play, they shot 35%, which was good for eighth in the conference. However, they are good at guarding the three-point line. In fact, they're the number four team in the country at three-point defense, allowing 28.5% wow. uh, to opposing teams. So that is something. However... I really highly doubt that they, in their schedule and and looking at it, I guarantee you they don't see a three-point shooting attack that Marquette has throughout the season. Mm. And not that that would totally spoil their average anyway, even if we did play them. But something to be aware of, they are good at guarding the three-point line. However, Marquette has shown, and I think that this is our greatest benefit going into this game, is that we can score – at any level. Yeah. 
and we can be explosive at times, but we've struggled against teams that can be explosive against us. And I don't see that in the Murray state team. John Morant, great, great player, only a 34% three point shooter. So could he get hot? Sure. Yeah. But the rest of the cavalry isn't coming. I just don't see them going on an extended run against a Marquette defense that has shown Mm -hmm. that it can lock down even some of the best offenses in teams like Villanova. So I really think that Murray State doesn't have the runs in them. (laughs) You don't need to laugh at that. Seriously. They don't have, they don't, uh, yeah, they hung with Alabama, they hung with Auburn. They beat Belmont in the in the tournament, but they're just not a team that has the explosiveness to beat a Marquette. I think that's right. They, from what I saw, the, the they're not. I'll just say it again: they don't shoot the basketball well. They get everything with little floaters. Uh, you know, good finishes at the basket, contested finishes, yeah. But I wasn't seeing many twelve footers go in. You and can't so, trade twos for threes against Marquette. Right. After 40 minutes, you know, you're not in addition, it, not to be a nervous Nelly because I don't want to be like Brian, but in addition to the potential foul trouble that all the driving and slashing that their guards do. One of the other things is that the way the style Murray state likes to play, they want to run, they want to get the ball. They want to go, they want to get downhill and they want to drive the lane. So one of the things that Marquette has struggled with this year, turnovers, if Marquette is in a mode now, now Murray State, they seem pesky defensively. I wouldn't say they play great team defense, but they're athletic. They have length. If this is a game where Marquette coughs it up a lot, Murray State can turn those turnovers into points. They can they can get those transition buckets on Marquette. So I think that's one of the things to watch. That if Marcus or whoever's you know handling the ball, if they're not crisp. Murray State and multiple guys on Murray State, not just John Morant, um, have the capability to turn that into buckets pretty quickly. And that's how Murray State could go on a run, because I agree with you, Pete. It, it's not coming from beyond the arc, but it could come in that transition game. Well, and I think that what happened to us in the Big East tournament and prior to that in our losses perfectly sets up our mindset going into the game against Murray State. Because what our coaching staff, I'm sure, has been focused on is that ball security on the perimeter. And if that's Murray State's really only chance to disrupt our offense and make plays and and turn this game around, um, they're going to be in trouble because that's, that's literally what Marquette has been focused on for the past two and a half weeks Yeah, in their, in their practices, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that it couldn't come at a worse time for Murray. Honestly, Murray State would be better off if Marquette had been on a winning streak coming into this game and feeling good about themselves. But because of the fact that the microscope has been on that ball security on the perimeter, it really puts Murray State at a disadvantage because Marquette's going to be ready for that type of thing. Yeah, I. I'll be interested to see what other people say. So John Morant is, you know, in multiple mock drafts, he's either going at two to Phoenix, he's going at four to the Bulls. You know, he, he's clearly up there. Just watching this one game, he he kind of – he looks like a guy in the physical mold of like Vander Bloom mixed with Chris Dunn. I got to be honest, he looks like he's a good player. I don't – I was kind of surprised after watching a basketball game that he would be as high as two just because like 90% of his buckets are coming from inside. I mean, he's definitely in the physical mold of someone who, who could be a lottery pick, but I was a little surprised to see him up there uh, at number two after having watched this game, but who the well, hell am I? I'm just a guy with a podcast microphone. I will say the one thing that you have to look at for him is that he's number one in the country in assist rate. Yep. That's right. He assists. 52% of Murray State's baskets, which is a, an unfathomable amount. And you could imagine if these guys could actually hit three-point shots, <laughs> how much better that assist rate could be. Yeah, that's so true. Clearly, this is a guy who is 
if not the best, one of the best distributors in the entire country. I wish Marcus and some of these other guys on Marquette would watch some John Morant film on that aspect of the game. But again, if your team is full of guys who are shooting 32, 33% from three against a established defensive squad in Marquette who has been trained to get out on the perimeter against some advanced perimeter shooting teams and teams like Villanova and Creighton who have seen excellent perimeter shooting. I just don't see Murray state having those threats or having players who could outperform Marquette's perimeter defense. So folks, this is going to, we're getting towards the tail end here of our uh, quick hitter pod, just to react to the seating, uh, the timing and everything like that. Uh, certainly there's a lot more to come from us this week. And I know a lot of the other Marquette outlets will be recording another pod, probably Tuesday night to do a little bit of a deeper dive into this matchup with Murray state. And we'll probably get a chance to talk a little bit more about Florida state, but Pete, before we, before we wrap up here, you were making some interesting points early on that even if Murray state is a really good matchup for Marquette or even just a good matchup that Florida state, if we're looking a little bit further down the road, Florida state could be one of those nightmare matchups. Yeah, I totally agree. My girlfriend and one of my best friends both went to Florida state. So I pay a little more attention to the Seminoles than the average Joe and they are a scary squad. But before we move on to Florida State or just briefly talk about them, yep. I just want to say, first of all, the fact that we are talking about this Murray State game as a good matchup is honestly now what scares me because it seems on paper like this is the perfect team for us to play in the first round to get a good win, yep. move on, and, and then think about the second round which is the only reason that I think that we might lose is just because it seems too obvious that we should win this game. And if we do lose to a team that we look like we match up this well against, this season will be a total catastrophe in terms of the way that we finished on the stretch. <laughs> and if we lost to this team who we on paper match up great against, I really hope that's not the case. But that has to be said, this could, if we lost this game, this would be an absolutely catastrophic finish to the season. I will be the first to admit that. But the problem is, looking forward, Florida State is possibly one of the worst possible matchups of any team that I think we could see in the second round. And that includes Duke, the Dukes of the world and things like that. They are so long and just frustrated. They're... In my, my analogy that I said to these guys through the text message chain earlier was that they're like St. John's if they're taller and well-coached, <laughs> which should That's scare scary. the shit out of know. the Marquette fans <laughs> because their defense note. is so good. They out-rebounded Virginia in the ACC tournament 35-20. to 20. Yeah. So what, do you, folks, what do you think they're going to do to us? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, folks. You should enjoy this Murray State game because uh, it may not be much more after that. Folks, Pete, we need to wrap up here. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for listening to this quick hitter pod of Marquette being back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. This should be a really fun week. It's always a really fun buildup. Marquette is a number five seed. Despite everything that has happened over the past couple of weeks, Marquette held on to a number five seed, as you said, Pete due in large part to the strength of our non-conference schedule. Let's see what they do with it. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Florida State is a tough matchup, but you never know. So with that, we're going to wrap it up. Any final thoughts from you, Pete? I did mention that this team is full of interest – or this bracket is full of interesting teams. Yeah. But at the same time, I think that it's a bracket that could open up at any time. Mm. And I think that Marquette needs to focus on this first game, get past it, Florida State, although they're a terrible matchup for us, I think that because they're not an offensively perfect team that we still have a chance to beat them. This is a, a bracket that could open up at any time due to some upsets. So I'm really excited to see what ha could happen. Marquette has a chance to make a run because of that craziness that always exists in March. And I'm just glad that we're in the freaking tournament. I can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be a really, really fun week. 
Thanks, as always, for tuning in to the Real Chili Podcast. Give us a follow on Twitter, at Real Chili Pod. Send us your questions. We'll be sure to get them in. Before closing, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout-out to Brutus, uh, one of our Twitter followers. Uh, handle is at sgriffin87-98 to uh, with the handle of Brutus. Uh, he was the one who actually put up these stats on Marcus Howard that I cited earlier. Really some terrific work, and I, I think is, is something every MU fan should look at. Go ahead to our Twitter page, and you can find him there. Shout-out to Brutus. Anyway, thank you for listening to this episode of the Real Chili Podcast. Signing off for Pete Mohan, I'm your host, Mike Lavender. We will be back soon later this week, and we'll talk to you next time here on the Real Chili Podcast. Podcast.